All right. Okay, somehow that, okay. All right, well, um, thanks everybody for joining today um, for uh, Reynolds Company's Tech Talk. Today's subject is uh, Plant PAX System Estimator. So we'll be talking about this today. Uh, looking forward to presenting this, this subject. Um, before we get started on the plant on the system estimator, I uh, would like to point out a few events that we have coming up. Um, on the Tech Talk side, um, in August, in September, um, next time we've got the mod, uh, lockout tagout subject matter, um, which should be great. And then uh, late August, we're going to have Spectrum controls uh, do a, an Encompass partner update. So Spectrum. Um, those are the, they make a lot of compact logics modules, micro 800 modules. They have a universal gateway, some interesting products there. And then September, um, we're going to uh, talk about drives, how to configure drives with uh, connected components workbench. And to finish up September, we're gonna have a, a, a quick talk on Control Flash Plus, which is really, which everybody should be using now uh, to big, big time saver over, over the older control flash. And then next month, our, our more detailed user group, um, we're gonna have a Rockwell information software overview. So I'm looking forward to that. And just so everybody knows, all, all of our tech talks and user groups um, are available. Uh, the past uh, events are available on reynoldsonline.com or our, uh, through our YouTube channel. So uh, one more announcement before we get started today. Um, if you haven't already heard, the uh, Automation Fair is, uh, will be an in-person event and it is in Houston this year, November 10th and 11th. So we look forward uh, to all of our friends and customers and partners and Rockwell folks to come together for that. And also uh, this summer we had uh, a Rock Live event which was a virtual event and all, all of those sessions are, are now available on demand. So lots of content available out there. Uh, we love to see our customers and partners educated and, and, and as well as, as, as all of us uh, really helps out. So uh, my name is David Newt and I'm gonna be uh, doing the uh, tech talk today around the plant PAX system estimator. So, um, before I jump in, I actually, this is, this is a, a kind of an unusual one for us. We don't really have a presentation prepared. So I'm gonna just make some general remarks and then uh, go into the details of the, of the uh, system estimator itself. So, um, so that's it for the presentation. And I'm gonna go ahead and minimize my PowerPoint and get rid of that. Um, so, my PDF. So, so plant PAX, um, real quickly, I'm sure everyone on, on the line um, probably knows what it is, but just a quick refresher, you know, plant PAX is, is a fully characterized distributed control system from Rockwell. And so in thinking like a distributed control system, um, you know, it's a little different than, than just parts and pieces, but all the parts and pieces are together. So when we first approach implementing a plant PAX, we recommend that you take a look at, at some documentation. And the first piece of documentation is, is Rockwell's uh, plant PAX distributed control system selection guide. And so I've got that open up, opened here um, for our reference. But this is really where we begin when, when let's say, you know, we're, if you're an end user and, and you want to design, you want to do a migration into Plant PAX from a from a PLC HMI system, or you've got a greenfield project um, that where you're going to use Plant PAX, or if you're an integrator and 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 you're you're going to about to be involved in designing a Plant PAX system, kind of the first step that you do is you take a look at this selection guide. And so inside the selection guide. Um, you know, when we start selecting a plant PAX system, there's a lot of things that go into it. So we have, we have to set up the, some infrastructure. 
we have to go in and, um, and specify servers and workstations. And then, you know, we go into more of our traditional, what we think about Rockwell with our, our controllers, networks, and IO. But all of this comprises a system. And so, so this is a great documentation tool that helps you build a system. But wouldn't it be nice if there was a piece of software that allowed you to create this instead of having to do it from scratch? And so that's, that's where the, the uh, plant PAX system estimator comes in. And so the, the estimator takes you from that initial conceptual stage. And it, once you use it to create your system, you end up with a number of things. You end up with a network design. You end up with, um, with your hardware and software bill materials. You end up um, understanding um, how your network goes together. And by the way, it's, it's sort of inside of the guardrails of where Rockwell would support that as a system. So, so that's what the plant PAX system estimator does. It's, it's kind of a, uh, it's a wizard, if you will, to help you get that design of the plant PAX system before, you know, before any, any hardware or software is purchased, before any programming is done. Um, kind of that first step to, to kind of put your arms around what that plant PAX, PAX system is gonna, is gonna entail. And so where is the plant, system, plant PAX system estimator, you may ask? Well, it is inside of Integrated Architecture Builder. And so um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on Integrated Architecture Builder in and of itself, but this is uh, you know, a comprehensive tool where, where you can build detailed um, hardware bill materials, you can build networks, you can... You can um, test out whether things are compatible with each other. So what better place than to put the, uh, the, the plant PAX system estimator. And, and in here, I'm in the, what we call our wizard view. So these are all the other wizards that are available besides plant PAX. So, so you can build compact control logics, uh, micro 800. You can do a lot with uh, distributed IO. There's a number of migration wizards that are out there. So you can migrate, uh, if you're working on a PLC5 migration or a slick migration or a Micrologix migration, there's wizards in here built to, do, to, to help you get that system migrated and it, it, uh, within following all the Rockwell rules. So that's, that's, the, that's the big key here. So today we're talking about the plant PAX system estimator. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that. And I'm gonna shut these down. I should have done that before. Um, so what we're going to talk about here, so I've created a project already. And um, one of the other nice things about Integrated Architecture Builder is there's a series of labs. If you've never used the tool before and you want to you want to use the tool for a certain thing, look under the help menu and there's labs for all the wizards that I mentioned before, including Plant PAX. So, so what I've done here is I've actually built the lab kind of step-by-step step, and then I added a number of things as well that I thought maybe the, the, um, to add a little richness to, to the system. So we've got an existing system here. Um, and so I am selected on the kind of the top level here of the wizard and uh, I've called my project the process plant. And so from here, you can see a high level view of what your system uh, encompasses. So you've got you know, your system information. Um, over here, you have a summary. So I can tell how many uh, different pieces of, of the puzzle that I have. I have how many process automation system servers do I have? How many operator workstations do I have, et cetera, et cetera. And then some more details. How many alarms do I have? How many historian tags do I have? All those kinds of things. And as I walk through, all the steps here, you'll see how these numbers get created. Um, some other things to look at are the system preferences. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and open the system preferences. And there's a lot to see here, but um, I wanted to point this out because these are kind of the constraints of plant, plant PAX. So um, the beauty of, of the system estimator is 
the guardrails are in place. So as we design our system, if we run into any blocks or, or any, 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 um, anything that Plant PAX hasn't been tested for, we'll, we'll, we'll get a notification. So you can tell how many, you know, how many data server tags can I have on scan? How many alarms can I have? How many um, IO system, IO per system unit, that's 25,000. So um, how many controllers per subsystem, that's 10. So these are read only, but these are sort of your, your overall system guardrails to understand the constraints of the overall system. Um, also, before we get, before you get started on a new system, um, the Plant PX has a number of hardware defaults that, um, that allow you to, to set up what your kind of default hardware would look like. And so this is where you would do that. So, so for me, I'm gonna say 100% of my IO is gonna be the same family as my controller. So I'm building everything with, with uh, control logics in this project. But if I wanted to divide it up into different IO, I could do that here. If I wanted heart IO, I could, I could set the, select that as my default. Um, if I wanted to come down here and some more details on hardware, if I wanted to use redundant power supplies, I could just check this box. And then every, every IO drop and every uh, controller will have redundant power supplies. So a lot of, there's a lot of settings in the system and a lot of, a, lot of, a lot of settings that make things a lot easier. So as I said, this is a complete system. So um, there's a lot of, so our software build material is gonna be created using this estimator. So, um, and Thin Manager is uh, you know, used quite a bit in a lot of, a lot of our Plant PX systems. So this is where you set your Thin Manager settings. So do I want simplex or redundant? Um, this is a running, a, a running tab of how many, how many clients am, is in my system today. Um, and maybe I'm connecting to, to an existing system that already has Thin Manager clients. So I could add that here. So those are some pretty simple uh, thin manager settings. Um, something that's new that was added in, in for 5.0 plant PAX is uh, uh, used as connecting to an, a, an existing core switch and, in, and adding a core switch into your plant PAX system. Um, and a core switch is, would be a high level uh, layer three switch maybe uh, that would be connected to your enterprise, some, some higher level um, software things. So you can do that here in your uh, network uh, configuration. Also to do with uh, software licenses and contracts, I can set that up here. So um, in my software, I can select, do I want uh, eight to five or 24 seven support? Um, am I in interested in an integrated service agreement? So I, all I have to do is select this button. And when I build my bill material, an integrated service agreement line item gets created. Um, to, to then be filled out later uh, when we get more details about the system. So that's what the service contract is. Um, so a lot of things here at the high level we're going over. Um, visualization is a big piece of plant PAX. So a lot of systems now uh, implement a virtual architecture. I think I said visualization, excuse me, <laughs> of, of virtualization. So all I have to do is select this and I get a data center that pops up on my list over here. And so that's gonna be the next, the next item that we look at. So, so our system has a virtual architecture. So when we, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and, uh, and move from the overall system down to the data center here and take a look at what our data center looks like. And so I would say for a key highlight, um, Folks that are that are that are using data centers and, and uh, virtual servers for the first time, this is a really beneficial tool. Because what this does here is, as I build my servers and as I build my clients, and as my demand uh, for the data center increases, uh, this is a running tab of all the virtual CPUs, the hard drive space, and the RAM that I'll need for my virtual server. So, if you see down here, we have a summary. Of, of what that means, of, of, of what our system's going to need. So then we could take that uh, information and then build a server that fits our needs. And so uh, we can also add redundancy and some other things here. 
So this is the data center. And so, so as we go forward, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna cover some of the servers that are comprised of Plant PX. Um, the most important piece of that is what we call the pass or uh, process automation system server. And so that's really the key. Uh, that's the, um, the HMI server, how our data, our, our data server uh, that connects to the controllers and supplies our um, operator uh, workstation with data, those kinds of things. So inside of our pass, there's a lot of different options we can select. I'm looking up here. Um, of course, uh, we can select uh, the pass as our data and alarm server. Um, we can now with uh, factory talk link 6.1 and above, uh, we can have multiple instances of factory talk links on the same server. So that's what this tells me is I'm gonna use my dual data server so why is that important? Well, as we develop Plant PAX and as, as this system gets created, in the background, the system estimator is analyzing your data bandwidth needs, uh, not only at your controller and IO layer, but also at your software uh, HMI and server layers. So when I select this button, that's now I've doubled my data server bandwidth. And so now I may be able to get more tags on my server than I couldn't before. And we'll take a look at some of those performances, system performances later. Um, the next selection here, this is really more about licensing. So what kind of license am I looking for? So if, if I click down here, I can have an unlimited. Um, those of us that, that, that are familiar with Factory Talk View SE know that these two bundles are the most cost-effective way to build out a system. So I can select that here and I'll see that in my in my uh, in my bill of material. Also, redundant servers. So this is a large system. So I, when I collect this select this box, I will have redundant uh, pass servers, and that will be reflected in my bill of material. Um, and as I as I mentioned, uh, this is a virtualized system. So each different server, we can tell the system, are we virtualized or are we not? And so, so the pass system is gonna be on our virtual server. So we select that here. And then you can see some other summaries of uh, you know, tags and, and uh, IO and et cetera on the, on the pass system. So as we move down, I'm gonna open up the pass a little bit. And so inside our system here, we have uh, in our pass system, we have what we call subsystems. And so these subsystems, in, our, in my example, I have three because there are really three different types of network examples that we can uh, build in Plant PAX. And so the subsystem is essentially building out a particular network. And so, um, so my premix raw subsystem here, the most important piece of this is to identify what type of network that you want. And so, so my, in my premix system, I've got a DLR network and we'll see what that looks like later. Um, um, so I can select that and then it's gonna automatically build anything underneath this subsystem is gonna be built into a DLR network. Um, and then I can select my redundant distribution switches, which we would recommend, et cetera. And so inside this subsystem is where we see our controllers and IO and, and, and potentially operator workstations. Um, in my reactor subsystem, I'm using a PRP or a, uh, <clears throat> a parallel redundancy protocol. And so this is a different architecture that we've introduced uh, with, with Plant PX 5.0. Has a, adds a little more redundancy to it, more resiliency, and it's a zero converged uh, network. So built for purpose here, we've got two channels and I can go in and select my, 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 I can always go in and select my default uh, switches. So I can come down here and say, okay, um, it, it created an, ac an access switch for me, but I can select this list and I can see all of the potential supported switches, uh, static switches that are available. And this is a nice tool. It gives, it shows you all the different uh, features that are on each different uh, switch. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave this default, but this is a really great way to, to specify the switches based on the functionality that you need. 
And so that's available throughout, throughout the system. So this is our PRP network. And then down here we have our simplex network. So this would maybe be a smaller system. I define it as simplex. Um, and then of course I've got my, my gateway switches and then my access switch down here. I can always specify that later. So moving on from our, from our past system, uh, we will go into the central control room. And so inside the control room, we've got, as you can see, five operator terminals and an engineering workstation. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on my engineering workstation and notice it's non-virtual. So in my system, this happens to be a full computer workstation. So I'm not actually using it, I'm not connecting it to my virtual server. So it's a standalone computer. Therefore, it's not gonna be part of my virtual server. Now, when I click down to my operator terminals, that's a little different. So my operator terminals, these are, what we would call uh, zero client uh, thin clients. So in my thin client specification, I can, I can even, I can tell the system how many monitors I need. Um, for the terminal hardware, I can go ahead and specify my virtual view uh, 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 thin client. And then I also tell the system, you know, that it's a thin manager terminal and that it's an OWS terminal. And, and again, so inside a virtual system, um, we have another server that I'll talk about later called the remote desktop server. So I need to specify that I have a, a remote desktop server here. So that helps me build my specification for my, for my virtualized system. And then um, another thing that's, that's relatively new is the ability to scope our operator clients. So in this case, I'm inside my central control room operator one. And so I'm I am able to scope where, what this terminal will ultimately be able to, um, to control and, and monitor in my system. And so in my central control room, I've got everything that's going to be able to see the whole system. If I build up my operator workstations in my different subsystems, I may change this and we'll see that in a, in, in a, in a little bit. So moving on uh, my, on our remote desktop server, for those of you that are familiar with Plant PAX, uh, Plant PAX refers to this as an OWS server or an operator workstation server. But, but I kind of, I, I like to call things what they are. And so, so this server has Microsoft remote desktop built into it. So that's why I named it that. And of course um, it's gonna be uh, virtualized. So it's in my data center. And I've designated this as my Thin Manager server, so I'm going to I'm going to install Thin Manager on this server. And right now I've got a, a, a five clients associated with it. So the next server we specify in the system would be the domain controller. And so those of you that have that have worked on Factory Talk USC systems in the past know that typically on a system larger than a, a distributed system, we typically uh, have at least one domain controller associated with the system that helps uh, the factory talk director directory um, communicate and it facilitates a lot of our security that we have built in. So we use Windows security on a lot of applications. And on a larger systems, we recommend that this would be that we set up redundant uh, domain controllers. So I've got that selected here. And then I've got it virtualized to my data center. So moving on, we have our historian. Um, so the system can recommend how many historian tags you would need based on your IO, based on the number of clients that you've got, uh, your data requirements. So it tells me I need 3,700 um, tags. I've got it virtualized. The next system here would be asset management or asset management server. So uh, this is asset center. So I'm specifying in the system how many assets I want whether I want disaster recovery, um, et cetera, and it's gonna be virtualized. So with Plant PX 5.0, Asset Center is built in to every system. And the reason for that is uh, with 5.0, we've introduced something called a system ID. And the system ID is the ability to take all your components that are included in a Plant PX system. That's anything from 
you know, from your controllers to your HMI, all the way to MCCs, drives, et cetera, and assign a unique system ID to it. Think of it like as a, as a real-time um, uh, installed base uh, system that tracks all those components as a system. So that's done with Asset Center. So Asset Center now is built into Plant PAX, essentially. Um, most systems would have, a, would have a, um, what we call a uh, system information server. So that's what this is. I called it SQL Server. This is where a lot of our configuration is going to be stored. Uh, would be Asset Center. It could be uh, Vantage Point, et cetera. So that's, um, and what this helps us with is to identify the Microsoft licenses that we're going to need for SQL Server, uh, which, can be, which can be challenging. And kind of to round this up, um, our different systems. So this is a, what we call an OWS or an operator workstation. And so an operator workstation is a little bit different than a, than a, than a terminal. So up here in my control room, I've got terminals. Down here, I've got an ENI supervisor, uh, superintendent workstation. So a workstation typically is a standalone computer and we can make them virtual if we would like, but this is gonna be a standalone computer so it's not going to be virtual. It's not going to be uh, inside my virtual server, but um, but it's going to act as an operator workstation. And then here, right here in the bottom, I've got an engineering laptop. So this is where I would how would I I would then identify that. Again, this is a laptop, so it's not virtual. And I've got my loop tuning software, so I can tune loops with it. So moving along, I'm going to jump up here back to the past and back to to. Uh, to our subsystems and get to the meat of building the system out. So essentially up to this point, we've identified our networks, we've identified our servers. So now we need to go in and we need to talk about controllers and IO and other networks and IO networks. So again, this is, this is pre-built, but um, I've got a uh, controller here uh, called my uh, premix raw controller. And so this is, a process controller. So I can specify the type here and notice we've got a lot of quite a few. With Plant PAX, we support the L7s and the L8 controllers. So you see these, the standard, the, the, the L7s and the standard L8s. We also support L7 redundancy and we support L8 redundancy with the standard controllers. Now, in addition to that, we have our process controller simplex and we have our process controller is redundant. And we have two, we have a couple of flavors of compact logics for skids uh, where, we're, where we want to, we want to use all the plant PX tools. So here um, I've got an L83 EP, which is, which is the mid range process controller. It's a simplex system, but I still want this as a dedicated chassis and I want my remote to be separate. So on a, on a process controller, this, if you've never used one before, this might be new to you. The, the process controllers have built-in task rates associated with them. So there's a fast task, a normal task, and a slow task. And so you can set these for different speeds. And so, so uh, these speeds um, will then, can then you know, be, be selected into uh, Studio 5000 and, and uh, into your system. So this is a DLR. So I've got automatically, I've got my, my DLR here set up. Um, now this, and kind of the real key to the controller is to look at your summary. So I can look and see estimates for how much memory I'm, I'm gonna use, how many tags I'm gonna use, um, even down to alarms. And so the alarms are important um, with, with the L8 controller and plant PAX, we use, um, our logic space uh, alarms for this uh, tag based alarms. And so I'm making an assumption here that out of all the potential alarms I can have, I may only be actually alarming 75% of them. So what that means is, is the potential alarms, it, it takes your total IO and you know I may not be alarming all of it. So, so I kind of, as an estimate, put 75% there. So that's the first, that's one controller. Um, I want to jump down here and look at my uh, premix raw controller, and so this is a, just a standard L8, an L83E, 
Notice I don't have the tasks set up here. So it's a little bit simpler. Um, I'm gonna open up my reactors and notice in my reactors, I've got a redundant setup. So I've got L83EP redundant controllers. I've got my P controller task. And I've got another thing here called uh, cross-loading impact. And so this is specific to redundant controllers. And, and we, we covered this in another, in another uh, user group, but cross-loading is the, uh, is the is when the primary and secondary controller synchronize with each other on a, on on uh, after each program or after after all programs that are that are set to to synchronize. So if you're using best practices, which can be referenced in a manual, then I can set this setting to low, meaning it's going to have a low impact on my CPU. Now, if I, if I did not use best practices, or if you wanted a kind of what I would call a worst case scenario as you're sizing your system, I guess set this to high. And notice here in my CPU usage, I've got 43% there. If I change that to low, that jumps down to 31. So that does have a pretty significant impact on, on sizing your system. So that's an important, especially when you're doing redundancy, that's an important attribute to take a look at. And if you want more information on, on, uh, on best practices, uh, you can look at our, at, at our user group uh, around uh, control logics redundancy. So, so that's, our, that's our redundant controller. So those are the kind of the three different main types of, of controllers. So once we've identified our controllers in our locations, um, the next part would be to, um, to, to specify our IO. And so, like I said, this is, in, this is in our existing system. If I wanted to add a new IO drop, I could just right click and add a new location. I'm gonna go ahead and configure my location here um, by selecting this. And so we see our, our screen up here. So um, relatively easy to build your IO out. You just basically list your DIs, DOs, AIs, AOs. If you're, bu if, if, if you're building an estimate, you can just add a number of spare IO and it will automatically create extra spares for you. Um, and as I do that, I could put 25% spares here and notice my, my CPU and memory uh, would go up slightly when I would do that. So, so I'm gonna go ahead and cancel that. Oh, before I, before I leave that, um, there's a number of different settings, different um, control strategies that are built into the estimate model. And so these are all the default settings. So Plant PX System Estimator estimates, you know, out of all your IO, how much is gonna be simple, how much is gonna be complex, and uh, it's all done. That's all done in, um, in the library preferences here. And so I've got this at, set at default. If you really wanted to get specific, you could go in and manipulate those numbers. You can save it as a separate template. Um, if you know, if you have a little more information about the system that you're designing. So that, that allows you to get a little more granular uh, with you know, sizing your CPUs, sizing, sizing the memory that you're gonna need, et cetera. So there's a lot, a lot of levers you can pull on that. So, so you may think, okay, well, I've got, so I've got my you know, default IO, so I can, I can configure that. What if I have some specific IO that's not listed here? What if inside my AIs, I've got, you know, I've got, I've got current modules, I've got temperature modules, um, I've got thermocouples, et cetera. What, how am I gonna associate, how am I gonna do that? Well, you can get more specific by clicking this button down here, assign IO to hardware. And so what I've got here so far is I'm using default settings to, configure all my IO, but if, got, if I've got specific uh, needs around say uh, analog inputs, I can change that here. So now I can add any of my analog input modules. Let's say I, maybe I need some RTDs here as well. I can add that to my grid. And so here's my, here's my, um, my isolated RTD module. And so, Instead of maybe instead of that being a current module, I need that to be an RTD. So then I can change that out 
And so now under that specific IO mix, I've got, I've got my, uh, my RTD set instead of my default module. So I'm gonna go ahead and cancel that. And I'm gonna remain in the plant PX wizard. Okay, so, so now we've got, and uh, these are, are also similar. Um, so now, as you can see, we've, we've, we've built our IO, we've built our controllers. Um, now there's another thing we can add is we can add some network uh, systems and maybe part of your system has is, is got smart MCCs. So we have the ability to add an MCC to this. Now, we're not actually configuring the MCC in particular. We're really creating that data network that's gonna, that data that's gonna come out of the MCC. So if you notice here, we can specify if we know the, uh, if we have particular uh, variable speed drives, if we have motors, if we have um, E300s or uh, smart motor controls, we can add all that in. And so that adds all of our net, that adds to our network bandwidth um, and our, our ethernet IP network that's gonna go back to the system. So that's a nice feature we can add. Um, back to the IO, one thing I wanted to cover, um, there's this over in the top right, there's a 1711 configured panel. This is actually, uh, Rockwell offers a pre-designed, pre-configured uh, panel uh, for Plant PAX. It would come as a system. So all I would have to do is select this and then that pre-configured panel would come in as my bill of material as well. And so that, that's you know, a full panel uh, with the pre-design uh, with all the terminal blocks and, and fuses, et cetera. It would be part of it. So as you can see, we've kind of finished up with our design. And so the next thing, the next step that I would take as I was building, build this out, would be to click on my uh, generate bill of material upon finish and then hit the, hit the button. I already have it done. So I'm going to um, go ahead and go back out here. And so once it's finished, I'm gonna jump onto the hardware tab and I'll show you this, these are all of the components that were created. Um, so we've got everything from our data center to our, our, um, our engineering workstations, our terminal, our, uh, our uh, thin clients, our controllers, our IO drops. Um, there's an IO drop. There's an IO drop. All that's been created and our network has been created for us as well. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this small. But as you can see, so I've got, if you remember, I had three subsystems. I had a DLR subsystem. I had a PRP subsystem. And I had a simplex subsystem. So these are all my subsystems and my IO and my controllers. And then each of these pair of switches here at this level are my distribution switches. And so the distribution switches connect to my core switch. And my core switch is where my data center rests. I'm gonna open this, I'm gonna get a little more detail here now. And so this is my, this is my data center. So this is my virtual server. These are my, my five uh, uh, thin clients. And then these are my uh, workstations. And this is my, this is my core server, I'm, excuse me, my, my core switch. So my network is done. Um, and this is a fairly complex network. Imagine if you had to do this by yourself. Um, in my PRP, my switches with the red boxes around it, tell me that that's a those are redundant boxes. So, that, so those switches have to support redundancy. So the, the system is smart enough to automatically specify the switch that supports redundant, that, that supports uh, PRP. So if I wanted to take a look at any of these individually, so this is my DLR, uh, this is my PRP, and this is my, uh, my, my uh, simplex network here. So again, if the network uh, has been greatly improved 
And, uh, and, uh, and so this is a really nice, nice piece of the overall puzzle. So, um, so let's say, okay, we've got the network designed. Now we really wanna see, you know, we wanna get a bill of material printed out. So for those of you that don't know how IAB works, um, I can click this button and get a project bill of material to show up and it comes in to Excel. And so this is what we've got here. So I've got in Excel, I've got a line item for all my switches, my, my controllers, my software, everything shows up here at a list price. So this is great for, uh, for that initial, uh, there's my, uh, my, my plant PAX um, uh, pass server. Here's my, um, my redundant server. Um, and again, um, so in this, all of my other servers, and then uh, I, as I scroll down, I get into my hardware. Um, I get into my, my process controllers. I get to my IO down here. So all this is available to me in list price. I get a summary for how much this is gonna cost down here and I can do what I need to do with that. Now, if you wanted a little more detail and uh, maybe a proposal format that you wanna to send to a, a customer or do you wanna have for, for, uh, for reference, uh, we can create a report by pressing this button. And so I've done that already in the background. And this is what the report looks like. So this is our, our integrated architecture builder um, Word document. And so I can scroll down here. Um, and I can see I've got some of the, my network uh, diagrams printed out here for reference. As I scroll down to more of the hardware, I can see my hardware uh, pictures. I can see the part numbers. Um, and my controller, and then I get down to my controllers. The nice, one nice thing about the controllers are I can get dimensions in here. So I, so as I, as I, if I'm building my own panels, I can understand uh, the dimensions that I'm going to need in my panel. I can see power utilization um, based on what I've got, uh, et cetera. So just a lot of information here. It's available to us as I go, as I go down. Um, and so that pr that pretty much covers it. Um, you know, we've got, so, so as I said in the beginning, the system estimator kind of, instead of having to go open a manual and build everything from scratch, provides the, the system estimator provides the ability to do it kind of in a point and click in a graphical format. So, so what, what you have out of this, out of, out of the bill of material and the proposals is a system that's approved you know, that, that, that follows the Rockwell guidelines as a plant PAX system. Um, and, and if you do anything um, unusual that wouldn't be approved uh, or, or would, not, would not follow the guidelines, um, which my system doesn't have, but, uh, but if you wanted to, like if I wanted to change this to maybe an L7, um, all of a sudden, it's going to recognize I've got a problem because my 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 controller doesn't match the way I, way I've got my I/O set up. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and change that back. And once I once I refresh the screen, everything will be fine. Or actually, no, actually, I need that needs to be a process. So now now that I've got my process controller back in, I'm good. So anytime you you make a mistake, which is the system is designed to help you fix your mistakes. Uh, it's pretty easy to see it um, with that example. So that pretty much covers the what I wanted to cover today on the system estimator. I don't know if there's any questions or comments out there, but uh, um, it's a comprehensive system. There's a lot to it, but there's there's a tremendous value in using it as you're building your uh, plant PAX system. So if there aren't any more questions, I appreciate everyone's attention uh, today and look forward to, uh, if you have any, if you do have any questions about the plant PX system estimator, please reach out to one of your, um, to one of your uh, automation specialists and I got, um, and we'll be more than happy to help you uh, 
on your plant PAX journey. Until next time, have a great day and look forward to uh, visiting you next time.